Hi, everybody. Happy Monday. I hope you guys had a really great weekend. I hope you were extra nice to your moms or your grandma or any other special lady in your life. And I hope they just had a wonderful day yesterday. Um, I just, I had a nice day. So um, I hope that everyone's ready. We're almost there, guys. This is, we have this week and then two more weeks after this week. So basically just three Fridays, three more Fridays and then we're or three more Thursdays, because you guys end on Thursday, and then I end on Friday. So three more Thursdays. We're almost there. We can do this. All right. Let's see if we can remember all the way back to last Friday, which seems like a long time ago, where we read about Ivan and um, Julia and her dad have decided to help and get Ivan's artwork and put it as a bull as the big giant uh, billboard that is there advertising the big, big top mall for people to go see Ivan. So they put it up and let's see what happens. We're starting on page 221 today. The next morning, I watch Max's car slam to a halt in the parking lot. He leaps out. He stares at the billboard. His jaw is open. He doesn't move for a long time. Uh-oh. I don't know if Max is very happy. Mad human. A mad gorilla is loud, but a mad human can be loud too, especially when he's throwing chairs and turning over tables and breaking the cotton candy machine. Phone call. Mac is kicking a trash can across the court when the phone rings. He answers it red-faced and sweating. What the? He demands. He glares at me. I don't know what you're, he starts to say, but then he stops to listen. Who? Julia, who? He asks. Oh, sure. George's kid. She's the one who called you. More talking with the phone to his ear. Matt comes closer to my cage, eyeing me suspiciously. Yeah, yeah, he says. He paints. Sure. We've been selling his art for quite a while now. There's another long pause. Yeah, absolutely. It was my idea. Mac nods. A smile starts at the corner of his mouth. Photos? No problem. You want to see him in action? Come on down and have a look. We're open 365 days a year. Can't miss us. We're right off I-95. Mac picks up the overturned trash can. Yeah, I think he'll be adding more pictures. It's a, you know, what do you call it? A work in progress. When the call is done... Mac shakes his head. Impossible, he says. An hour later, a man with a camera comes to take my picture. He's from the local paper, the one Julia called. How about you take one of me with the elephant? Mac suggests. He drapes his arms around Ruby's back, grinning as the camera clicks. Perfect, the man says. Perfect, Mac agrees. Oh, looks like Mac's going to figure out how to use this situation to benefit himself. Let's see if it works out well for Mac. A star again. A photo of my billboard is in the newspaper. Mac tapes the story onto my window. Each day, more curious people arrive. They park in front of the billboard. They point and shake their heads. They take photos. Then they come into the mall and buy my paintings. While visitors watch, I dip my hands in fresh buckets of paint. I make pictures for the gift shop and pictures to add to the billboard. Trees with birds, a newborn elephant with glittering black eyes, a squirrel, a bluebird, a worm. I even paint Bob so he can be on the billboard too. I can tell he likes the picture, although he says I didn't quite capture his distinguished nose. Every afternoon, Mac and George add my new pictures to the billboard People slow their cars while they work. Drivers honk and wave. My gift shop pictures now cost $65 with a frame. Yep, Max figuring out how to make more money off of Ivan. This chapter is called The Ape Artist. I have new names. People call me The Ape Artist, The Primate Picasso. I have visitors from morning till night, and so does Ruby. But nothing's changed for her. Every day at 2, 4, and 7, 
Ruby plods through the sawdust with Snickers on her back. Every night, she has bad dreams. Bob, I say after I've soothed, soothed Ruby to sleep with a story, my idea isn't working. Bob opens one eye. Be patient. I'm tired of being patient, I say. This evening, a man and woman uh, come to interview Mac and also George and Julia. The man has a large and heavy camera perched on his shoulder. He films me as I make my pictures. He films Ruby in her cage with her foot roped to the bolt in the floor. Mind if I take a look around, he asks. Mac waves a hand. Be my guest. While Mac and the woman talk, the cameraman walks through the mall. He pans his camera right and left and up and down. When his eyes fall on the claw stick, he stops. He trains his camera on the gleaming blade. Then he moves on. Mm. The early news. Mac turns on the TV. We are on the early news at five o'clock. Bob says, don't let it go to my head. There we all are. Mac, Ruby, me, George, and Julia. The billboard, the mall, the ring, and the claw stick. Uh-oh. Now people are going to know that Mac uses the claw stick on Ruby. All right, this next chapter is called Signs on Sticks. In the morning, several people gather in the parking lot. They're carrying signs on sticks. The signs have words and pictures on them. One has a drawing of a gorilla cradling a baby elephant. I wish I could read. More people come today. This is called protesters. They want Ruby to be free. Some of them want Mac to shut down the mall. So here's a picture of what the signs look like. They want the animals to be free. They're protesting. In the evening, George and Mac talk about them. Mac says they're protesting the wrong guy. He says they're going to ruin everything. He says, thanks for nothing, George. Mac stomps off. George, holding his mop, watches him leave. He rubs his eyes. He looks worried. Dad, Julia says, looking up from her homework. You know what my favorite sign was? Hmm, George asks. Which one? The one that said, elephants are people too. George gives her a tired smile. He goes back to work. His mop moves across the empty food court like a giant brush, painting a picture no one will ever see. Here's the very last one, the page, the last page we're going to read today. Check marks. A tall man with a clipboard and a pencil comes to visit. He says he's here to inspect the property. He doesn't say much more, but he makes tiny check marks on his paper. He looks at my floor. Check. He examined Ruby's hay. Check. He eyes our water bowls. Check. Mac watches him, scowling. Bob is outside, hiding near the dumpster. He does not want to be a check mark. So, the billboard has brought attention to the Big Top Mall, so people know can see how these animals are living. And there are people who do not agree. So there are people protesting and they want um, Ivan and Ruby to be set free. So maybe Ivan's plan is working after all. I guess we'll have to continue reading to find out. Here's our vocabulary words for today. The first word is suspiciously. And suspiciously means with distrust. Scowling. Mac has been scowling. Frowning and glaring. So at first, it seemed like Mac enjoyed all the attention the Big Top Mall was getting, but now I don't think he's going to like it very much. All right, guys. So it is Monday. Um, if you do not get to go pick up your stuff last week, today is another pickup day from four to six. So um, you can go out up there. I will not be there, but there will be other people there to get you your things. Um, make sure if you have any library books, look for your library books at home so you can get them turned in. Uh, most of you guys got your books turned in, but some people are missing something. So um, I text, I sent out texts last week to people who had library books. And if you got one of those texts, just let me know if you have any questions. 
Um, and that's it. Zoom meeting tomorrow. And that's about it, guys. I can't think of anything else to say. So I'm going to stop talking and let you go and get started with your Monday. All right. Have a good day. Bye.